Hi Floss Tube, it's Vonna the Twisted Stitcher and today we're going to learn how to make a drum pin keep. We're going to take our design. My design is Early America by Little House Needleworks. I've stitched it on 32 count raw linen using the called for colors. You can find this design in the Little House Needleworks leaflet, something old, something new. The first thing you want to do is you want to think about how your drum is going to look, okay? And since this has a lot of writing on it rather than a lot of design or picture, I want to be able to kind of see it. So I'm leaving two inches on both sides and all I did was measure from the edge of my stitching out two inches and I cut it with my rotary cutter. I did that on both sides, so there's two inches on both sides. I don't want quite as much showing on the top, but I am going to do an embellishment along the top edge of the drum, and I want about an inch to show, so I cut this from the edge of the corner, up from the edge of the stitching to the top is one and a half inches. From the edge of the stitching to the top, one and a half inches on both the top and the bottom. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is I want about an inch showing top and bottom on my drum. So that means a half an inch is going to be folded over as my hem. So I'm going to measure one inch from the edge of my stitching where this is on the back side of my stitching. This is the back of my stitching. I'm going to measure about one inch. Now then, I'm going to draw with pencil along the edge. And before everybody freaks out about that, the reason I do that is because it's going to be hidden in the seam and I don't care. If you care about it, then get a disappearing ink pen or a chalk marking pen or whatever you want. I'm using just a lead, number two graphic lead pencil. So I'm going to measure one inch and I'm going to lightly draw my line. Let me do that. I did it a little bit too lightly. And I'm going to do that same thing down here. An inch from the edge of the stitching and draw my line. Okay. Now then what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure what that is. And it's about seven inches. Okay, so I'm going to fold it over on where that lead pencil is and just finger press it all along the top, making sure I'm hitting where I drew my line. This is exactly how I do my drums. You take time now because then on measuring this and, and doing this finger pressing and it'll come out a better, a 100% better. Okay, I'm gonna fold it over on the bottom too. Just going right along that drawn line on my pencil. Okay. Now I'm gonna I'm just going to see how I'm lining up from the front, how it looks from the front. Does it look even? And it does. And now I'm going to see how it's appearing on the edge. If we're matching up on the edges where we're going to sew eventually. And we are. Okay, so now I'm going to go over to my ironing board and I'm going to iron this down, this crease down really well. And I'm going to get some interfacing and I will bring that back over to show you which interfacing I use and I'm going to apply interfacing on top of this to hold it when we sew it. I'll be right back. All right, we're back from ironing. I have my piece. It is fully interfaced. I, I put just enough interfacing that the edges where I ironed 
the edges are underneath the interfacing to keep them tacked down for when we sew. The interfacing that I use is like the same that I always use and I always show P44F Pellon. It's just a very light, basic interfacing. I've gotten the question multiple times and I think I've answered it multiple times, but I'm gonna say it again. The reason I use interfacing is because it, it protects the stitches, first of all. It protects them on the back when we're stuffing. It protects them on the front when you're displaying. They won't pull out over time. Um, it makes, you can see that it makes it very nicely flat and straight. It gives it a little bit of substance, not much, but a little bit of rigidity to help you form whatever you're doing. There will be no lumps, no bumps. The interfacing helps with that. I hate lumpy and bumpy finishes. If you take your time, you use your interfacing, and you fluff and stuff, you'll have perfect finishes every time. Finishing is time. That's all it is, is time. And you put the time in the sewing, so put the time into the finishing. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're gonna fold it over, pretty sides together, and we're gonna sew our cylinder. I'm gonna take it over to my sewing machine. I'm going to do a fourth of an inch seam, straight stitch, just along the side here, and I'll be right back. Just a minute. All right, I'm back. I sewed my straight edge about a fourth of an inch from the side. You wanna make sure that your edges are clean. If you're gonna have a gap in your edges, like if it's not quite exactly the same length, you want it on the bottom rather than the top. I'm trimming my threads, throw them away, and now then, we want this drum strong, so I'm not gonna open my seams because if I open my seams and press, that's gonna make you be able to see the thread a little bit easier. And so I'm just going to finger press to one side or the other. And you just have to do that. And now I'm going to turn it out. And again, you want to make sure that you kind of finger press that inside to one side, one side or the other. It makes no difference. Okay, you can see a kind of a visual of what the drum might look like. Now we're going to have to fix our top and our bottom. How I do that is I use this. This is a scrapbooking template for circles or a circle template. Mine is made by, uh, let me see. I got mine, it's by Fiskars. I got mine in Joann's, probably, or Michael's or Hobby Lobby, wherever. And how I do to kind of figure out if, what diameter circle I need, the first thing I do is I just try to like, see if it matches any one of these templates. So it's going to be in between these two sizes. I know that. So I'm going to cut out, trace and cut out both of these sizes just to see which one may fit or may not fit. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to trace and cut out the smaller one. Get your paper scissors. I buy these at Hobby Lobby. They're Sewology scissors. You can get them on sale for two bucks. And I only cut my cardboard with these scissors. You can make really nice circles if you just go slow. Now that I have my circle cut out, I'm gonna see, is that a fit? And no, it's not because there's a lot of gap. So now let me cut out my big one, my bigger one. So I cut out that one, that's what this one is. Now I'm gonna cut out this one. Now we see if this one, how this one fits.
just needs to be a little bit little smaller so I'm just going to go right I'm going what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw this one this helps guide you to make so that the cylinder is perfect I'm going to draw this one on this on the other one okay and I'm going to go just right in the middle of there Now then, what we're going to do to check the fit is I'm going to get some um, pins and I'm going to stick it in there just to see how it fits around the whole drum. And you can see that it fits perfect so I'm going to make I'm going to glue this one on top of this one just for the fact that this is going to be our base and I like my base to be two of these thick so that it has a sturdy base and all I'm going to do is on this smaller circle I'm just going to put a little bit of glue center it on here and let it dry but since I know that this is the perfect size, I'm going to draw this, use this as a template. Okay. There's our top and here's our bottom. So we're gonna set that to the side. The next thing we're going to do is I use I use this as for my top some people will say well you can't stick a pin in it and I want to stick pins in it well then you don't have to use you can take it out you can use this to um, kind of like a template to find out about how much big material how big your material needs for the front or and then throw it away or whatever but I I like to use mine for the top and what I do so that I can stick pins in it, I'll show you right now. Get your quilting, quilt batting. It's 100% cotton. I'm going to, the easiest way to do this first thing is just go ahead and put a little glue on your topper. And get one cut and set it aside so this is going to be the top top one quilt batting on the mat board now we're just going to make circles we're going to make about five circles so with the one that's glued glued on there I have five more or four more here so that'll be a total of five full size now I'm going to take my template and since our circle is a, is between this one and this one I'm going to make one of each of these small ones two as well I think I'm going to go ahead and make two of the bigger ones all right now we're going to cut these out. All right. Now then, what we're going to do is we're going to glue just a lightly, just to hold them in place, just a little bit, just a little bit of glue. And we're going to top all of these on here like a cake like we're making a layer cake okay now then you can see that if I'm gonna have a pin it'll stick right in there all right okay we're gonna set this to a side just for a minute we're gonna put our glue up 
I'm going to use this fabric for my topper. Isn't that going to be pretty? Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my fabric. <clears throat> And for my bottom, I'm just going to cut out a square. We're going to set that aside. Now I'm going to cut out a square for my topper. But since I have all of this extra puffiness, I'm going to make it just a little bit bigger so that I have room to stretch it to make the top. And you can see that I will. Okay, so we're done with the fabric. Now, now we're gonna take upholstery thread, our strong thread. We're gonna take a, a generous length of it. And we're going to thread our needle. We're going to make a knot, quilter's knot. I'm going to show this again. I've shown it in other videos. I'll show it again. You make a T across your needle. You hold that thread, the T arm, on the needle with your thumb. Wrap it. We want a big needle because we're going to lace. So we want a big knot. So we're going to lace. So, you know, seven or eight wraps around the needle. You hold it with your thumb and you pull it down the length of the thread until you have the knot. Okay? Clip your tail. And I want to generally um, get rid of some of this extra fabric. This is the bottom. We want the glued piece on top. That's going to be inside the drum. So I'm going to hold this and just get rid of these corners. This does not have to be precise. And now I'm just going to do a running stitch. Up, down, up, down, about a fourth of an inch or a little more from the edge of the fabric right like that running stitch and then I'm gonna pull it till the knot catches see running stitch and I'm gonna do that all the way around okay so you can see there I got that I'm gonna put this inside of this with the glued part on the top it fits like a little you know like a little cap and then I just pull and now I'm going to make like a star that's how I think about it to just make it tight I'm going to take like two or three little running stitches across opposite sides Pull. Now I've got this leg of the star, and I'm going to go down here and make this leg of the star. Two or three little running stitches. Pull. I've got an X. Now I'm going to go opposite sides to this what side. Pull. I'm going to go to opposite sides. you can see I've got a star see the star but I still want to I feel like this is loose so I'm going to just continue to make legs of a star when I'm ready to be done I'm going to make my lasso two loops through the lasso and pull it and I've got my knot Now then, I want some more thread because 
we'll need a lot of thread for this one, so I'm going to get more thread. I'm going to trim some of my sides, just the corners. And I'm going to go ahead and do my running stitch all around the outside just like the other one. Okay, so here we <clears throat> Okay, so here we've got our little nightcap again. Bonnet that we're going to fit on our topper. Going to hold that down and draw it closed. You can see that it creates like a little pin cushion on the top, a little rounded drum. But you don't, it, it just, in my opinion, it's just easier and doing it this way, and you actually get a smooth finish. You don't have to fight with it because the mat board that I'm using as the base gives it a platform. Again, I'm just lacing this by going, making my star like what I did on the bottom. Opposite sides. One more on this side and we'll be done. You want to check to make sure that there's no like puckers. That everything's smooth. It's dome shaped. It is because see we had those graduating circles and so it gives it a dome, a dome shape. And smooth and it's pretty okay so we're gonna pull it tight we're gonna hold our thumb on it and make our lasso okay there's our lasso the circle I'm gonna go through it twice and end off that makes our knot and I'm gonna cut it all right Now then, I put my top on first, and how I do that is I fit it with pins. I always start at the back where the seam is because you want to make sure that you get that seam down. If you want to, you can clip, if this is sticking up the seam, you can clip it down like at an angle, but mine is hidden, hidden pretty well. So I just got that. I'm going to go all the way around fitting this, custom fitting this to my top of my drum. Okay? All I'm doing is just going to put pins all along the edge. I'm going to speed it up. Alright, I got my top on all the way around. We're going to start back here at the seam and I'm going to whip stitch it. I'll do the first couple so that you can see it. I'm using a neutral colored thread, just regular sewing thread. This is polyester. Polyester has a little bit more strength rather than cotton. It lasts longer. Um, you know, cotton is 100% natural, but it, it will deteriorate. I finish with my finishing. I use um, all purpose heavy um, dual duty from coats is what I use. And it is a holly, it's it's a hundred percent polyester, I'm pretty certain. 
I don't know. Doesn't say, but I'm certain it's pretty much polyester. Okay, so I'm gonna load up my needle. I wax <clears throat> my threads when I hand sew because that just gives it a little bit more. Um, I just like to, I think it makes it stronger, makes it slide easier. Load up my needle. I'm going to make my knot. And I'm going to go to town after I clip my end. Okay, so I'm going to start. I'm going to bury my knot by going down and pulling it. And I'm burying it in the seam so you can't see my knot. And now I'm just going to take right along the edge, I'm just taking little whip stitches. Let me get my glasses on. I can't see anything. Okay, so I'm just going to take little whip stitches. I'm just going to take a little bite of fabric and come out just the very top. Can you see that? As a guide, I try to like make it only in the first two lines, the two threads of linen. Or if you were, if this was Ada, I would just do the first row of Ada squares. Okay, so you can see that I'm just taking little whip stitches See it right there but when I pull they disappear so that's all I'm doing is I'm just taking a little bite of the fabric dome a little bite of the linen and I pull it and I'm going to do that all the way around I'll speed it up All right, <clears throat> we've got our top all the way around. You can see that you cannot see my stitches. Okay, so now we're going to fill it. Okay, to fill it, you take your fiber fill. I use Mountain Mist. And you start flopping it, lofting it, and stuffing it in there. You get your china, your uh, chopstick. And you want to stuff it firmly. That, in my opinion, is the whole key to these type of finishes is that you stuff firmly. I mean like pack it down in there to get into all the corners so that this, this is flush. You want to get your chopstick and go right along that seam. It's like, think of it, you like you're caulking I'm going to speed it up while I get it to about right here, and then I'll slow down and I'll tell you what I'm going to do next with my secret. Okay, now then, I'm about, about right here. I've got it packed like tight. 
okay? Now, my secret that I use is crushed walnuts. Why do I use crushed walnuts? Well, it helps me to pack it even tighter because those walnuts get in all the little crevices that I can't get down to. Then the other thing is, is that it gives it a very nice weight so that when it's setting on your table or on your shelf or wherever, it's setting there with substance and it's, it's just, it just holds it so nice. So this is a half of a cup and I put about a cup's worth in. I put a little bit of batting on the top and then I'm going to use my chopstick and I'm going to back it down. Pack, 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 pack it down. I'm going to put a little bit more. To put more fiber fill on the top and I'm gonna pack it down I'm just gonna make sure that I'm filling all the corners I mean not corners the edges because you don't want like dimples where the edges are. Looking pretty good. Smooth. I don't like bumps. I don't like lumps. It's looking good. It's smooth. Maybe just a little bit more on this one side. I don't want any dimples. around with my chopstick right along the edge working all of this right along the edge I think that does it so we're gonna put our lid on Same way that we did the top. I'm going to pin it all the way around, whip stitch it. I'm going to speed it up. Now I'm going to whip stitch it all the way around. All right, there we go, around the edge. Here's the drum. Pretty nice, huh? Now then, I wanna embellish it. So, I've been thinking about putting this along the edge, but I wanna see what it looks like. I think I'm gonna do that. And I'm gonna get one other embellishment. I'll be right back to show you what I'm going to do. All right, I've decided that I'm going to use my crochet trim here and I'm just going to tack it along the seam. I've got my thread on and I've got it waxed and I'm just going to tack it right along the seam with a witch whip stitch.
Okay, so we've got it going all the way around. I'm gonna add just a little bit of glue on these edges with my little tiny glue bottle. I try to weave it in and then tack it down so that it looks continuous. And then I'm just making my lasso and ending off like I always do on all my videos. All right, so here we go. And there is my drum. I think that I want just a little bit of oomph on the top so I'm going to stop and I'm going to make some cording, some cording to match the red flowers because there's not so much red in this. And I want just a little bit of mm. And I think that if I do just a thin red cording at the top around this lace, that that'll make all the difference. So let me do that. I'll add it and I'll come back and show the final product. But that's how you make a drum. It has taken me one hour and 15 minutes to make this. Um, that's with speeding it up. Um, it won't take you that long to watch this because I'm going to speed it up, but that's about how long it takes to make a drum. And um, so. Pretty cute. Pretty cute. I'll be back with the final picture. All right, I'm back. And I was right. The little red cording. It made all the difference. So there you are. Early America, drum. All the way around. Perfect. Go and drum all the things. Until next time, bye-bye.